What's up everyone, thanks for tuning in. So today I'm gonna to be installing this VW Sirocco radiator into my 1988 Honda Accord. So as you guys can tell, it's a lot smaller than the OEM radiator and it's even smaller than the two row Mishimoto radiator that's designated for the early 88 to 91 Honda CRX and I believe the first gen Integra as well, or sorry, second generation Integra as well. So I've had this radiator since like 2011. It's treated me well, it's uh, been damaged, been fixed and been in two, multiple cars. There's no reason why I need to replace it now, but I'm um, gonna do it now since I am planning on doing a turbo build for this. I wanna try to make as much room as I can for the manifold as well as the turbo, and then try to figure out where I wanna lay down the piping for the intercooler piping as well as the location for the intercooler. So this has been like one step. I know I didn't wanna go a uh, half size radiator. There's no problems going with a half size radiator. Those work as well. And I'm going to do a separate video on how to install those as well into this chassis. But for now, we're gonna go through this and I'll talk to you a little bit more about what this radiator came from and we'll go from there. All right, the radiator came with two of these fans as well as the accompanying hardware needed to mount it on there. Now, when I bought this radiator, I thought that it came with a fan shroud on it. The picture was kind of deceiving. It was just both of the fans laid down on cement and for whatever reason I thought it was a picture of behind the radiator with the fans installed and so on and so forth but it didn't. So I'll show you guys how to install the fans utilizing this hardware. It's not gonna be that hard. I kind of wish it had a fan shroud. Later on I'll probably fabricate my own. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be too hard. There's already uh, mounting points to be able to mount a shroud onto the radiator. If you guys were wondering if you guys could use the OEM original fan onto this, yes you can but just by looking at it, you'd probably only be able to like put it uh, in the center or like mount it to like one of the mounting locations on here. So I don't really recommend it. Like if you really didn't want to use these electric slim fans, that's fine. But if you case you guys are wondering, I'm sure it can be done. So it's pretty obvious. My setup is a lot different than most stock accords and even some mildly modified accords. So I'm gonna take you step by step on what's needed to be able to remove the radiator. It's not hard, the only like really messy part is just draining the thing, but even then that's not gonna be hard. So what I know this is an aftermarket radiator. So what I'm gonna do is I actually have the OEM radiator available to show you like, you know, where everything's needed, like the drain plug and all that stuff. So I can visually show you on that. But as far as removing it, thankfully the cool thing about this chassis is that this front um, radiator support um, bolts off. It just, it's usually just held on by four 10 millimeter and just pops right off. Most chassis aren't as easy as that. Some of them you actually got to like drill them out to like take them off. So thankfully you can pull that out and go from there. Here is the OEM radiator. So this is the back of it. So this part what you're seeing right now is facing towards the firewall. So obviously upper radiator hose lower. So this is your thermal switch. So this is what sends a signal to your fans to turn on when it reaches a certain temperature. I believe they kick on around 185 or something like that, anything above that. And then this is your drain plug. Just turn it and then pull it out and then it will drain. And that's basically all you gotta do. Drain that, uh, obviously do it when it, the engine and you know, the coolant's cold. If you wanna make it faster, open that up and then open up the radiator cap to let the air and all that stuff push it out quicker. And then once this is all drained and stuff, then proceed to remove the radiator. Okay, again, obviously before you pull the radiator out, I mean, you can leave the fans on if you want to. Uh, just make sure obviously you're gonna have to take off the upper radiator and lower radiator hose, as well as disconnect the wiring for each fan. If you guys are wondering where all the mounting points are, there are the ones on the bottom. Right there in that corner. And for the AC, and then two up there. I have almost everything off the radiator to be ready to be pulled off. Upper radiator and lower radiator hose are off. Make sure to also pull the hose that goes to the overflow and about ready to pull it out. And that's how you do a radiator delete. All I gotta do now is delete power steering and I'll be winning trophies at car shows in no time. Just kidding. So one thing I failed to mention is uh, if by some miracle your AC system still works, 
and you have your AC condenser up front, then you're obviously not gonna be able to push the radiator far forward as much as I'm planning to. However, just due to the dimensions of this Roku radiator, you should be able to tuck it underneath the radiator support, which is, you know, obviously gonna give you more room in the engine bay. And, you know, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to still run a turbo if for whatever reason you want to keep AC power steering and all the other accommodating accessories. So keep that in mind. So before I go on and start installing the Sirocco radiator into this car, I'm going to do like side by side comparisons with the OEM and the EF CRX full size Mishimoto radiator. Okay, OEM radiator. Mishimoto 1988 to 91 Honda Civic EF slash CRX full size radiator and the VW Sirocco radiator. So I'm not a radiator expert by any means. However, I did do some deep diving into understanding them because I'm planning on getting another radiator for my 2012 Ram Power Wagon to hopefully keep temperatures in that 5.7 Hemi a little bit more consistent. But anyway, I digress. So. Normally what you usually see on websites where they sell aftermarket radiators, you always usually see like two core, uh, triple core, two row, three row, all that stuff. And then you kind of wonder, oh yeah, so thicker is better, more capacity, this and that. Sometimes not entirely true. And I'll explain to you why. So for example, here's the OEM radiator. So one inch core. If you pop open that radiator cap, you're going to see two slits. Those are the rows. So technically this is a two row radiator. Now, Due to the fact that this is an inch thick, I'm gonna make the assumption that if I took this top plastic portion, the top uh, plastic end cap off, that those rows are gonna be about a half inch each. So then moving on to the Mishimoto, this is listed as a dual core radiator. You look at the core of it, one and a half inch. So this is a half inch thicker than that. Open up the cap, which I believe these radiators come with a, it's either a 16 or 19 PSI radiator cap. You can upgrade to a 28 PSI one if you so choose to. If you were looking there, there's two rows in there. One and a half inches, if I was to guess how long each of those rows are, I'm gonna guess about three quarters of an inch. VW Sirocco, so this was listed as a two row radiator. So measure it here two inches. So this is a whole half inch thicker than the Mishimoto, a whole inch thicker than OEM. I cannot open this, but however, in the description, they marked it as a two row radiator. If I was to guess, you're actually getting one inch per row slits. So not only are you getting more capacity, you're also getting more um, fluid being uh, circulated through the system. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And here is a comparison to the Civic half-size radiator. Which I will do a video on how if to install one of these in here as well. It's not too far off. In case you guys didn't want to go to the VW Sirocco radiator route, but you can see how much taller the Civic radiator is compared to the Sirocco radiator. So one thing you guys might notice is the difference between the Sirocco radiator and the other two is that it does not have a radiator cap or a fill neck. So how are you going to remedy this? Well, the VW Sirocco utilizes an expansion tank system rather than the traditional overflow tank system. I'm not going to get into too big of details on this video. There's other great people out there that can do better descriptions of the differences between an expansion tank system and an overflow system. So. Be sure to go look that up on YouTube so you guys can see the difference. There really isn't too much benefit over the other. It kind of depends on what your application is and what you're trying to do. So your options are to either convert the cooling system to an expansion tank style system like the Sirocco. Um, or what I did is just buy this. It basically just has a filler neck welded on to this tube. So what I'm going to do is just cut up the radiator hose and just link it in like such and then fill it in that way and there is another way I considered to fill it in before I considered getting that extra neck and that was to either remove one of these sensor plugs and fill it in through that way and it would take forever but I mean that is an option to do so if you were going to keep like a complete sealed system if you guys were considering doing an expansion tank system or if not I mean that's one way of filling the radiator however having an overflow or a recovery bottle would still be necessary so another thing I failed to mention is if you by chance still have power steering that works like me, you guys are gonna have this power steering cooling tube that runs right here. 
So I actually, right now, if I have a pulled and it's like wedged in between the front license plates mount. Now, depending where you live, this may not be an option, but that's how I'm gonna do it. And it's pretty stuck in there. It's not going anywhere because this needs to be pushed forward for the radiator or else it's going to hit the front of the radiator for where I want to install it. Um, so we're, I'm planning to, it's gonna be this section right here. It fits perfectly sandwiched between this portion right here. And what I'm gonna have to do is figure out to where the mounting holes go, like for traditionally these right here. See where the pegs are in the bottom of the radiator to see where they go. I'm gonna mark it and I'm gonna drill a hole to have it sit flush downwards. And then I'm gonna either utilize these old ones and modify it or find some rubber bushing I have somewhere laid down somewhere in my pile of junk and put it there just because I don't want the radiator to vibrate on, you know, metal on metal vibrations over time, which can risk damaging the radiator. And this is where I'm gonna have it. Now, the cool thing about it is it can be moved that way as well. But I'm gonna show you some cool benefits of it. So one, this location for the inlet and outlet of the radiator uh, where the hoses would go to is pretty dang near close to where stock location would be on the OEM radiator. Another cool thing is this little metal tab here, that's part of the, that's part of the chassis right here. There is a mount right here if I was to install a shroud to where I can drill a hole back here and I can mount it here and none of the radiator would be touching anything, especially if you still have the front bumper brace. You wouldn't be touching anything. And you can see how far forward it is. So the peg underneath here to where it would sit into one of those, I'm gonna have to drill a hole on each side and then it'll be flush. So then this side won't be moving around like that. I'll be using a rubber uh, bushing or find some piece of rubber that's gonna prevent metal on metal contact on the frame. And the reason why I like it here, I'll throw this on real quick. Okay. So that's what it looks like with a support on. No contact anywhere. That's plastic, it's not contacting there. So another cool thing, if I really wanted to make this thing even more sturdy, could possibly get like a metal tab, screw it onto here, bend it backwards and connect it to the upper radiator support. I'm more than likely not gonna do that, or if you even wanted to, metal tab here, secure it here. I'm not. I'm probably more likely not gonna do that. So the reason why I'm gonna put it here more towards the driver's side is because look at all this room right here. And there's a three inch um, velocity stack. And now I can run direct intake. Not saying you guys should do that, especially on a daily driver, but there is that option now to be able to do so. I'm probably gonna go to the store and grab some pipe and uh, get like a little test fit and see how it works, something temporary. But that's cool, that gives you the option. Now, going turbo, I can move this this way more, mount it. And now, depending how I have it, I'm gonna more than likely gonna do a top mount turbo. So it's gonna be sitting up here and get all that cool air coming in this way now, going up towards the turbo or even make like, you know, a tube for the turbo, so on and so forth. Like the, the possibilities just with the dimensions of this radiator alone is like, you know, a, a lot more available than if you were to run a traditional full size or even a half size radiator. Okay, drilled out the mounting holes, one here, one here. Again, you guys are gonna have to mark it wherever you guys wanna set this here to know exactly where it's gonna mount to. So I have to use a 3 8 drill bit for it to sit flush in there. And then drill out a hole here. Yeah, I know I kind of pushed it, but the hardware I found that's gonna work. It'll be able to grab a, enough of the back of this to make sure there's a you know secure mount on this tab. In worst case comes to worst, you can bend this if you really need to move it or whatever. So now that I got that, so for the mounting right here, I found two of these old bushings. I believe these were like, I don't know exactly what they were from. They might've been from uh, 
front sway bar bushings. So these are the only ones I found that fit. And then I'm gonna set it down just like that and it'll be secure. Okay, it's installed. The only the rattling I'm getting is just from the peg down there, but I'm not really too worried about that. I got bush bushings on both ends, so there's very, very minimal metal to metal contact and the ones that are making contact are not really too big of a worry to me. Cut up some old heater hose, sandwiched it in between the frame and the front bumper brace. Now, there was um, more than enough clearance <laughs> between the radiator and the front bumper brace and chassis. I just did this kind of just a safety, just give it more of a secure, you know, a secure mount just so it doesn't move depending on like what kind of driving conditions that the car may be going to. And my next worry was if the hood was gonna clear. Now, the, the top radiator support does go over this and there's enough room to where you can maybe slip like a pinky or, you know, or, or two or whatever between the radiator and the bottom of the radiator support. However, since it protrudes out more towards, you know, this way, to, uh, towards the bumper, I was worried that part of the hood closest to the grill was gonna hit like this portion up here. But prior to drilling the holes and seating this down a bit lower, uh, I didn't have any problem shutting the hood. Now, granted, once I drive this thing, you know, I'll know for sure, you know, I'll drive this set up, pop the hood, check on the radiator, see if there's any marks or any sort of like scratches or dents in here from the hood from consistent driving. You know, obviously I'll be able to hear it from inside the car driving too, if something's rattling off, uh, off something. So I'll let you guys know, you know, let you guys know if that becomes a problem. So right into a slight problem. The two electric fans that came with this radiator, unfortunately they will not fit uh, both of them at least at the same time, they will not fit side by side uh, at all uh, without a shroud. It may fit with a shroud. Um, one way I could do it too would be put one on the back end and have it be a pull fan and then put one in front and have it be a push. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I'm debating not whether or not I'm going to do it like that. However, I have this old uh, Mishimoto electric fan that I had on the Civic half size radiator that I'm going to use. It's perfect size. It's actually not even uh, mounted in right now. It's just being held on to just the clips at the top and the bottom end tanks. So, or not end tanks, but portions of the radiator. So I think I'm just going to wire it up like this and just monitor temps and see how well it performs. I've ran single electric fans on full size motors or on full size radiators before without any issue. I mean, obviously having an appropriate fan and having the amount of fans pulling or pushing the appropriate amount of air will you know obviously give you a the most efficient out of your cooling system but i think for now i'm just going to run it like this i might change my mind later on and do a um an actual shroud on this thing and possibly maybe run duels or if i'm having heating problems which i doubt i will then maybe i'll just do the one electric fan in the rear and then one in front and run it that way okay so i'm going to show you guys how to install the electric fan using the provided hardware so if you're not going to go shroud, you're going to use stuff like this. So this is kind of like a radiator style zip tie. So basically how this works is, and I'll show you what the semi finished product looks like. So you're going to get your spring. You're going to put the narrow side on the zip tie like so. And then this is going to go behind the fan through the radiator fins and then onto the other side. On the other side, you're going to utilize this little thing and this one-sided foam pad. So make sure to punch out that center hole first. And then on this little doohickey, you see where it protrudes out like that. So that's gonna be facing towards the front bumper. And then the flat side is gonna be where this pad's gonna go. And the soft pad, the non-adhesive side, is going to be sandwiched onto the front of the radiator. So there's the front, there's the rear. And then, oh yeah, so these black clips need to be, it just slides in to the electric fan. And then slides in, you guys can't really see it because I cut it. So yeah, that adhesive is gonna be square. Make sure to cut and trim all the sides so it's not blocking all these fins. Like, is it gonna be like night and day difference if you don't do it? No, but I would rather have that bit more airflow in than not. So then just pull it to, or tighten it 
to where she feels right and then cut this excess off. So I'm gonna put the other one in, try to get a feel for it, see where the fan stays and then call it good and cut that off. Punch this out. Okay, make sure the back of this where the adhesive goes to is cleaned. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the focus. Remember, flat side goes on adhesive side and then try to line up the hole. Okay. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess. Okay, so with the soft side facing towards the radiator. Push this in. Okay, that should be good. Okay, I didn't film the cutting of the hoses and stuff, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So here's what the semi-final product's gonna look. So the one thing I did not get that I wish I did was an actual like aftermarket overflow or, or recovery tank or whatnot. So, but this should do fine unless I did something wrong, but whatever. <laughs> so Cut it like such. So I will say that the OEM diameter of the A20 uh, radiator hoses are a bit small. You're gonna have to put some muscle into getting it around the inlet and outlet of the radiator, but it is doable. Uh, I recommend just spraying some WD-40 on top of the outlets and then use a small like screwdriver to pry around on the edges of the hose itself to get it on there and then just twist and push in and just try to get it locked in. But other than that, it wasn't really that bad. In fact, I forgot to put one more hose clamp right here. Shouldn't be a problem. So overflow right now, have it done like this. So you see this is all blocked off right now. I'm actually at this moment in time, I'm gonna block this off. And obviously I'm gonna put a, uh, whatchamacallit, a hose clamp on here. But in the future, when I get an aftermarket uh overflow or recovery tank or i might just get an expansion tank since this might be put under pressure uh routing it this way if that makes any sense so I, as i said you can tell this is like not the oem radiator cap it's this whole thing is not really meant to be pressurized as much as the expansion tanks are supposed to be that's why there's a difference between expansion and overflow tanks so i'm just going to block this off for now and then fill her up so one problem that this radiator is going to have uh, in comparison to stock is it does not have a port or a sensor for the uh, thermo switch so the fan switch so basically once the ecu picks up that is going to be i believe i said it's like 180 185 where the fans kick on well it doesn't have that sensor now to where it can pick it up to send signal to activate the fan so what i did was here's the fan switch i just bridged it with a paper clip so all you got to do to test to see if the, re the fan relay works is just turn the key all the way to the uh uh, right before start position, the fan should kick on. If not, then you have a bad fan relay. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the key. No, it doesn't have to start the car, but just on right before you start it. Okay, perfect, there we go. And again, if that doesn't work when you do that, then either the relay is bad or you might have popped the fuse. All right, one minute up. Going to the thermostat opens, I pulled the clip to uh, bridges the uh, fan switch so it warms up quicker. And uh, hopefully get all the air bubbles out before I got one of those. Good thing to invest in one of those things. And now it's just going to be a waiting game. So I didn't use anything fancy, just a 50-50 mix of uh, distilled water and coolant. Uh, nothing crazy. And uh, yeah, just when it opens up, just make sure to watch it and then turn on your heat full blast so it circle is circulates throughout the entire system. All right, everything's topped off. Put the radiator support back on. If you really wanted to, you can add another mount to this to make it more secure, but I'm not too worried about it. This isn't really going anywhere, especially with the low, upper and lower radiator hose there. It's gonna just add more stability to it, prevent it from moving. So I'm gonna take it on a quick test drive right now and see how it runs. All right, well, there you go, there you go guys, it works. Took it on a couple test runs, I hit our high RPM and whatnot, and. I can't really tell you by the number exactly 
you know how much better or not <laughs> it did but it stayed usually where it stayed at even with the mishimoto radiator so i'm going to assume like 180s 185s at the most so didn't hit anywhere near halfway at all <laughs> no leaks check for everything in the morning when it gets cools down i'm going to see if i need to top off more coolant but other than that that's about it all right guys that about does it uh the next video i'm going to be showing you guys how to install like a any other radiators like such as the mishimoto one that i had for the 88 to 91 ef or crx civic full size and i'm also going to show you ways of installing a half size civic radiator as well for those of you guys wanting to go do that especially if you're b series or dual camera for your swap to where this might not be an option for you so if you have any questions ask me down in the comments below hit me up on instagram asian underscore sensation i'll do my best to answer you guys as fast as i can when i can the best way i can so thank you for guys for watching i'll catch you in the next one